So the physical examination of the hip is like the exam of other joints including inspection, palpation, range of motion, special testing, and neurovascular examination. In the hip there are a number of sources of overlapping pathology including intraarticular, extraarticular, athletic pubalgia, lumbar spine, GI, GU, and GYN which makes the physical examination so critical. It's been said about the hip that more is missed by not looking than by not knowing. And authors such as Hal Martin and others have taught us what to look for and what tests to use. But looking at a comprehensive examination of the hip, this is quite daunting to perform, especially in a limited amount of time in the clinic. The way I found this best to go about is a standardized process, looking at the position that I put the patient in, going from standard to seated to supine to lateral and finally to prone. In the standing position, we first look at gait, looking for an antalgic gait or Trendelenburg gait, also perform a Trendelenburg test. The lumbar spine is assessed for scoliosis and any pelvic, pelvic tilt or obliquity and apparent leg length discrepancy is also assessed at this time. Patients such as this one, who is actually facing us, have generalized ligamentous laxity and I find this best to do while the patient is standing as well. There are a number of tests which have been described for this. In the seated position, a neuroexamination is performed, including pulses, sensation, reflexes, and distal motor strength. Range of motion can be performed here as well. And if you have the resources for it, it's helpful to get strength testing pre-appointment, not only for the time of your appointment, but also for research purposes. The patient is next placed in the supine position, and palpation starts with the rectus abdominis and insertion, the ASIS, the AIIS, and the pubic symphysis, and the pubic bone. The adductor is best palpated by flexing and abducting the hip, and it's important to remember to have a, an assistant available when you're palpating sensitive areas in the clinic. While the patient is supine, I'll have them perform an abdominal crunch and also resisted adduction, as this is shown to cause pain in a high percentage of patients undergoing surgery for sports hernia. Range of motion in the supine position consists of flexion, which is normally about 120 degrees. This has been shown to be diminished in FAI. I'll also have the patient perform active flexion of both legs looking for obligate external rotation. And passive internal and external rotation can be performed as well. Normally 40 to 50 for IR and 50 to 60 for ER. The loss of IR is most commonly seen in FAI. has been proven by multiple authors. Abduction is normally 40 to 50, and adduction is 20 to 30. Also, is performed in the supine position with care to stabilize the pelvis to get an accurate measurement. The anterior impingement test is really our workhorse of supine special testing, which includes flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. The hip tends to engage between 80 and 90 degrees, and a positive test is one which is considered that reproduces the pain that's specific to the patient, usually deep in the anterior aspect of the groin. This has been shown to be commonly found in patients with FAI and shown to have a high positive predictive value for intraarticular hip pathology. The Faber or Patrick test was mentioned by Al and it's a figure of four type test uh, with the pelvis stabilized. First, the patient is asked to report if there's any pain, but also the distance from the lateral knee to the table is measured with the units of your choice, whether it be centimeters or fists. This was initially a test for SI joint and posterior pain by loading the SI joint, but increased distance was found to be correlated with lower back pain in professional golfers. And the authors here hypothesize that this may be due to hip pathology and capsular contracture of the hip. And Mark Philippon has really taught us about this test, defining a positive test as one which is greater than four centimeters of side to side difference. And a side to side difference has been found in a high number of patients with FAI, also causing pain. The Faber distance has been shown to be predictive of alpha angle as well. Other tests in the supine position include the dial test or the log roll test which is performed by rotating the extremity to neutral and then releasing or externally rotating the leg. This started uh, when Mark Philippon was doing actually an actual distraction test with fluoro to assess for a vacuum sign in patients who had capsular laxity and he noted that while log rolling the leg they had increased external rotation and a lack of capsular restraint, lack of a hard endpoint here. This evolved into the dial test, and this is shown to be specific with patients with a positive dial test having uh, 11 times more likely to report symptoms of instability uh, preoperatively or pre-appointment. These tests have been studied for inter-rater reliability, and there's been shown to be fair to moderate agreement 
This is a very good study, but of note, 40% of these patients carried a primary diagnosis of DJD, so it may not be applicable to all patient populations. Other tests which can be performed in the supine position include a straight leg raise for lumbar spine pathology, a straight leg raise against resistance, and true leg length discrepancy is best measured here with a measurement from the ASIS to the medial malleolus. The posterior impingement test is next performed by sliding the patient down to the end of the table. Extension and external rotation will engage the posterior aspect of the acetabulum and hip. And lateral impingement testing is carried out by abduction, external rotation, and bringing the hip up. The modified Thomas test can be performed with the patient at the end of the table. And this test is performed by bringing the contralateral extremity up to the chest and looking to see how far down the ipsilateral extremity falls. This is a test for hip flexion contracture or psoas tightness, and a positive test is either that of failing to drop down below neutral, or also can be quantified in degrees with high inner rate or reliability. In the lateral position, palpation consists of the SI joint, the piriformis, and the greater trochanter. Lateral special testing includes the Ober test, which is performed by flexing the knee at 90, bringing the hip into abduction and extension and letting it fall. A positive test is if this does not fall below parallel. And this also can be performed in extension, neutral, or flexion to isolate uh, different parts of the abductor mechanism. In the prone position, palpation is carried out for the proximal hamstring. And I still prefer to perform range of motion in the prone position because the pelvis is stabilized and this is easy to measure. Internal rotation is 40 to 50, as we've talked about. External rotation, 50 to 60. And prone internal rotation has been shown to be decreased in FAI by Mark Philippon. The sports test is also a valid measure of function. It should be considered as an adjunct and supplement to the physical examination. And no matter how good we think we are with physical exam, a number of studies have shown that we're not always accurate in detecting an intraarticular source of pain. And injection therapy may help us here. This will be covered in a later lecture this morning. So I wanted to say thank you, and a special thank you to Cliff Willimon, uh, John McDonald, and John Mahoney, who are sitting over here. Last year, uh, I had a little trouble on that mountain behind us, and these three guys dragged me down so I could have some new hardware placed on my ankle I hear that night. I also want to thank Dr. Philippon, who kindly came in after he saw the status of my ski pants. He gave me a full physical exam of the hip to make sure I had no acute labral tearing. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs>